Well, hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss about the last topic, the last two topics of the TOEFL grammar. It will be about prepositions and also like, alike and unlike. So in this, uh, what is it? Last two topics, it will be more about you familiarizing about um, vocabulary in English. So basically, there is no clue, exact clue, and there is no um, shortcut for this, except you have to be able to familiar familiarize yourself about this topic. Okay, let's start with preposition. Okay, here we go. Well, problems with preposition. Prepositions uh, can be used in two ways, in a literal way and in an idiomatic way. In the later use, the preposition means exactly what you expect. What, what does it mean? It means like when you say up or above, it means literally uh, ahead of you, I mean, above you. But the problem is that when it doesn't mean literally, it will be um, problematic, a little bit difficult to uh, cope with. Okay, let's discuss with the literal meaning one. Okay, the first example, the boy ran up the hill. When you say we have run up the hill, it's mean, it means like literally here's a boy here and run up the hill, literally. And then she went in the house. There is a house here, for example, and it's a door and there is a, a girl and getting inside the house. So up literally means going upward and in also into something. It's literal meaning. Okay, I think it's very uh, easy to understand. Okay, in the first example, the preposition up means that the boy went in a direction up rather than down. In the second example, the preposition in means that she went into rather than out of the house. In the idiomatic use, which is what appears most often, remember that most often on the two-fold task, the preposition appears in an idiomatic expression. That is, its meaning in this expression has nothing to do with literal meaning. So nothing to do with literal meaning. For example, I call up my friend and he succeeded, he succeeded in passing the course. Okay. It doesn't mean that going upward, no. And it doesn't mean like getting into something, no. In the first example, the word up has nothing to do with the direction up. To call up someone means to telephone someone. And in the second example, the word in has nothing to do with the meaning of into or inside. It is simply idiomatic that the word in is used after the verb succeed. It is impossible to list all potential idiomatic expressions with their prepositions because there are so many expressions that could appear on default task. However, in this chapter, you can practice recognizing problems with the prepositions on default type questions. Then, when you're working in written expression questions on the default task, you should be aware that idiomatic errors with the prepositions are common in that section. There are two types, there are two common types of problems with prepositions that you should expect. First, incorrect prepositions, and second, omitted prepositions. So basically, it is impossible for me to make a list of all the prepositions that uh, becomes items in English, but you can have a practice uh, based on the questions or the problems that uh, have been prepared by the writer of the book or the module here. Okay, let's move on. Recognize incorrect prepositions. Sometimes an incorrect preposition is given in a sentence in written expressions, questions, and default tests. Here, the game was called on because of rain. Okay, rain here, make the game called on. What about that? The second sentence, I knew I could count in you to do a good job. Mm. The first example should say that the game was called off. So not called on, it's called off because of the rain. 
because the expression is called of means cancelled. Called of means cancelled. And that is the meaning that makes sense in the sentence. Remember that it has to make sense in the sentence. To call on someone, to call on someone is to visit someone. Yeah, so like the claim was visit someone because of rain. It doesn't make sense. And this meaning does not make sense in this example. In the second example, it is not correct to use in English to to count in someone, the correct expression is to count on someone. Okay, remember that this is a matter of you familiarizing with uh, vocabulary in English. Once once again, you have to read more. You have to be exposed more about vocabulary in English, so you so you'll be able so you'll be able to identify the correct preposition in terms of idiom idiom in English. Okay, let's move on. Recognize when prepositions have been omitted. Omitted means deleted or erased. Sometimes a necessary preposition has been omitted from a sentence. In written expressions, questions on digital tests. See this example. Can you wait me after the game? And second example, I plan attending on a meeting. It should be something here. And also it should be something here. There is a preposition that uh, were cut off the sentence. The first example is incorrect because it is necessary to say, wait for me. The second example is, inc is incorrect because it's necessary to say, plan on attending. Once again, you have to be able to cast this based on the experience that uh, you deal with English. So if you um, read sufficient literatures about English and you face this kind of vocabulary, uh, you will be able to identify it. But if you are not familiar with these terms, you'll find it hard. You'll find it difficult to, what is it, identify the correct, uh, whether, or, whether or not it is correct, whether or not it is correct or incorrect. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Okay. It will be the last topic that we're going to discuss in the default test, eh? in the default grammar. Okay, uh, problem with usage. In English, certain groups of words have similar uses, and these words are sometimes confused in written expression questions on the default test. All the various usage problems are possible on the default test. The following problems are the most common. First, when to use make and do, make and do. And then second, when to use like, unlike, and like. The third, when to use other, another, and others. Okay, let's start with make and do. Make and do can be confused in English because their meanings are so similar. Since the difference between make and do is tested on default test, you should learn to distinguish them. You should learn to differentiate them. Remember that make and do have different meaning. Make often has the idea of creating or constructing. Make means creating or constructing. The following expressions show some of the possible uses of make. She likes to make her own clothes. She likes to create her own clothes. Would you like to make a cake for a desert? Would you like to, for example, it's like to create. It's more like bait, like creating something or constructing something. If you make a mistake, you should correct it. He was unable to make a response to the threat. Okay, once again, make means creating or constructing something. Okay, let's move on to do. Okay, right. Do often has the idea of completing or performing. Completing something or performing something. The following expressions show some of the possible uses of do. This morning she did all the dishes. It doesn't make sense when I say this morning she made all the dishes. No. She like did all the dishes, like clean 
are doing cleaning some of the dishes. Okay. The students are doing assignments. Because it's a performance process, not creating assignment. It is more like completing or performing the assignments. The janitors did the work, not making the work. It's like doing, not creating the work. You can do your laundry at the laundromat. You cannot say you can make your laundry. You cannot create laundry in the laundromat. It doesn't make sense. There are only some of the uses of make and do. Many uses of make and do are idiomatic and therefore difficult to classify. But this, you have to be able to memorize that make means constructing or creating, while do means completing or performing something. Okay, then. Well, okay, let, let's see some examples here. The biologist didn't stick several mistakes. It has to be made. Several mistakes. I hope that you will be able to do me a favor. Okay, what about this? No matter what job she has, she always makes her best. She always does her best, not creating her best, like performing her best. Okay, okay, let's continue to the next skill. It's about distinguish like, like, and unlike. Like, unlike, alike, and unlike are easily confu confused because they look so similar and they have many different uses. There are several structures with like, alike, and unlike that you should be familiar with. The first structure you should already be familiar with are just adjectives alike and like, like and like. Study the use of alike and like in the following examples. John and Tom are alike. John and Tom worked in a like manner. In the both examples, alike and like are adjectives. Both of them are adjective. Okay. That means similar. In the first example, alike is predicate adjective. This is a predicate adjective. So it should be uh, written after linking verbs. And we have R here as a linking verb. So it should be predicate adjective after the linking verb. You, you need to remember that is skill 50 when we talk about uh, more problems about adjectives. Okay. And then uh, in the second example, like is the adjective form that is used immediately before the noun manner. Remember that if there is like one word adjective, it should be written right before the noun it describes. It also about, um, I think it's skill 49, if I'm not mistaken, it's about adjective and adverb. The next structure you should be familiar with are the prepositions like and unlike, which have opposite meanings. Because they are prepositions, they must be followed by objects. John is like Tom, and just John is unlike Tom. It is it means similar. Similar. It is not similar. It is different meaning. So when I say like. Has the similar quality when I say unlike doesn't have similar quality. In the first example, the preposition like is followed by the object Tom. It means that Tom and John are similar. And in the second example, the prepositions unlike is followed by the object Tom. It means that Tom and John are not similar. Okay, the prepositions like and unlike can also be used at the beginning of a sentence. Like Tom, John is tall. Unlike Tom, John is tall. Yeah, it's like how like the different formations which have different uh, which have a similar or same meaning so it is the same as this the same as this like different information but has it having the same meaning okay let's continue okay the in the temple like unlike like alike and unlike like and alike both of them are objective uh, the meaning is similar and as an adjective, like is used before a noun, while alike is used after a linking verb. And then like and unlike, both of them are preposition which have different meaning. Like means similar, unlike means different. 
that's the uh, point of this matter. Okay, the last topic is distinguish order, and order, and orders. Order, and order, and orders are very easy to confuse. To decide how to use each of them correctly, you must consider three things. First, if it is singular or plural. Second, if it is definite the or indefinite uh, or end. And third, if it is an adjective, it appears with a noun, or if it is a pronoun, it appears by itself. So it is table. Indefinite. I have another book. I have another. Another here is an adjective. We don't know which one, but yes, I have another book. But we don't know the specific one. But in the more important thing is it is indefinite. And then I have another. You don't need to put the noun after it because it, it is called as pronoun, but you have to be able to make sure that in the previous sentence, sentence the, the conversation uh, mentioned about the thing. So when I say like, okay, blah, 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 um, I have another. It means like another what? It should be mentioned previously. Okay, what about the plural one? I have other books and I have others. So when I say I have other books, it should be followed by plural nouns. So another for singular, other for plurals. And it is adjective. When you want to say like, like a pronoun, just like say, I have others. Once again, if you use this formula or this formations, you need to mention the noun uh, in, the, in the previous sentence. And then we want to definite. Definite means like you know exactly what the thing is or are. I have the other book. The other book, other, can be used for singular if it is definite. If it is, if it doesn't use the because it is not definite, you cannot say I have other book, but you have to say I have another book if it is for singular. But if it is definite, then you say the, it is okay to use the other book. You cannot say the another book, it is not correct. Okay, or you have to say I have the other. It means like the other means like the other thing I mentioned previously, and it is singular. Okay, and this I have the other books. So once again, the other can be used both for definite singular and definite plural. And I have the others for plural and as a pronoun. You can remember that I don't I don't I don't think that it is confusing. I think it's very clear. Notice that you use another only to refer to an indefinite singular idea. Once again, if you want to mention something which is indefinite and it is singular, you can use another. Others is used only as a plural noun, not accompanied by a noun. And in all other cases, other is correct. Okay, the point is, please understand this idea. Okay, see exercise 60. It is essential to complete the first program before taking on the others. It means it is definite. And it means it is plural. And it is a pronoun because you don't need to put none after that. The another, another can it cannot be used for a definite. It's only for indefinite. So use there using there here is in correct. Well, okay, everybody. Um, I think that's it for our discussion. It is the end of the line of the default grammar. But uh, for the next topic, we're going to discuss something which is outside of the this model. But I believe it will be very useful for you to learn more, to understand more about the uh, grammar and default. Well, I think this is it for today. Have a good day.